Awesome. Well, good morning and thank you for tuning in or chiming in or dialing in uh, or uh, however you're, you're getting into the interwebs today. Um, thank you for joining. Uh, today is going to be a fun passage, uh, I think, and at the end we will also have communion, but why don't I kick us off with uh, prayer and we'll get started. Let us pray. God, we just come before you, thanking you for everything you do, thanking you for who you are, um, thanking you for um, your willingness to love us um, and your desire to to have a relationship with us. I pray that you bless this time, um, use it for your glory, um, open our hearts, open our minds, and uh, do those things as we open your word. Um, we ask this in your holy and mighty name. Amen. Awesome, awesome. Okay, let me um, kick off really quickly. And also, I just got a note from Tammy, and she did just find the link, which is a good thing. Um, so we will continue on. And uh, Tammy is also dialing in this morning, it looks like. Um, so with that said, I am going to kick off by reading 1 John 5, 1 through 5, which is our, our passage today. And it says, if we believe Jesus is truly Christ, we are God's children. Everyone who loves the Father will also love his children. If we love and obey God, we know we will love his children. We show our love for God by obeying his commandments, and they are not hard to follow. Every child of God can defeat the world, and our faith is what gives us this victory. No one can defeat the world without having faith in Jesus as the Son of God. Well, when I read this the first time, I thought, oh my goodness, um, that's just a lot of text and a lot of if if we do this, then we will do that. And I started breaking it down sentence by sentence and actually finding that there are quite a few if then statements in this. So I, I broke this down a little differently than I normally do and actually created if thens um, based on each of the pieces of this passage, um, which for me was rather telling. It also forced me to dig into some of the, the actual language and usage around uh, some of the words specifically because I was wondering um, why we were using some of the words and all of you on this call know that I am a, a writing nerd and a grammar nerd so I have to dig in and really understand the Greek before I um, give an opinion on, on what a passage means. So I'm going to break this down sentence by sentence and I would love to have um, your input should you so choose to on um, if this A makes sense, how you're applying it, um, if it is something that you've thought about before and um, what all of these crazy if-then statements are about. So um, the first one is, if we believe Jesus is truly Christ, then we are God's children. And the first thing that I thought about with this is, this is really the level playing field or to level the playing field. And if you, if you look back to when we talked about the um, Lord's Prayer or the model prayer, um, where that was the first time in scripture that Christ referred to God the Father as our Father. Until that particular point, it was always my Father in heaven or my Father, but that was the first time that he actually um, really set it up so that it was, that there was a quality for those of us who are believers. And, and to me, this was a great reminder of um, if, if we believe that Jesus is truly Christ and we believe the salvation story and we believe what the Bible says, then we are all God's children. So that takes away all of the facade of um, I'm this and you're that, be it um, male, female, straight, gay, black, white, any of the descriptors that we as people would use, God doesn't see that. God sees us all as his children. And to me, this was a great reminder of how to start this particular passage um, with the, the thought and the, the idea of, of equality through Christ. When I dug a little further into the next sentence, um, if we love and obey God, then we will also love his children. Uh, the first one was pretty easy for me to take. Um, the second one was not as easy for me to take, but it was only because I don't always love everyone. And that's just me being completely honest with those of you who are on the call. There are some people I find it incredibly hard to love. Um, I have a couple of neighbors who feed the feral cats and then the feral cats drive my animals crazy. Um, I don't love that person nearly as much as I should. Um, but according to this passage in 1 John, if I love and obey God, then I should also be loving all of his children, uh, which to me is a great reminder 
um, not only of the equality through Christ, but also the importance of loving all of his creation and all of his children. I'm sorry, I'm not intentionally trying to move out of screen. I have a dog who has decided to wake up and play. Uh, so we will continue on. Um, the, the next if-then statement that, that I found was, if we love God, then we show it by obeying his commandments. Well, if you, you know, and, and I was having a conversation this morning about all of the laws of the Old Testament, there being over 600 of them, are these the commandments and the laws that, that, uh, that Christ was talking about or that, that John was talking about when he was referring to, um, to this passage and, and this particular phrase? And it took me immediately back to one of the passages that we looked at earlier this year when someone asked Christ about what the most important commandment was. And his response um, was, the most important one says, people of Israel, you have only one Lord and God. You must love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. The second most important commandment is love others as much as you love yourself. Wow, I feel like I'm seeing a theme for the last few months, but also in this particular passage about the equality of, of God's children, how important it is for us to love them. And then if we're keeping the, the commandments that Christ said are the most important, the first, of course, being love the Lord your God with all your soul, all your heart, and all your mind. But then following that up with loving others as much as you love yourself. So the, the theme of love is resounding very strongly. Um, in this passage and in these if-then statements. The last one that came up out of this passage was, if we have faith in Jesus as the Son of God, then we can defeat the world. Well, this is where my grammar and writing brain goes into high gear, because how are we supposed to defeat the world? Is this going to be World War III? Are we hitting Armageddon? Um, do I need to create the Terminator so that I don't have to worry about it? You know, all of these moving parts and pieces are running through my mind. But if you look at the word world in Greek and this particular usage, um, it is actually a derivative of the word cosmos, which we, um, what, what we consider cosmos now is, or, or what we use um, today that has the same derivative is cosmetics. And it's obstacles, facades, um, et cetera. Um, so I'm not telling anyone to start or stop wearing makeup. Um, but what I got out of this passage was that defeating the world or defeating the obstacles that get in, in our way or in um, God's way of doing his will. And to me, this was just a great reminder of the separation of the world being people and the world being all of the obstacles and the stuff that we put in in place. And, you know, it, it could be anything from the, um, the worship of money, the, you know, putting our political bent in, in place of someone else. Um, you know, there are so many different ways that, that you can parse this, but at the end of the day, if, if we tie this back to the first commandment that, that Christ said was the most important, which is love the Lord your God with all your soul, all, all your heart, and all your mind. And our faith in Jesus helps us get the obstacles out of the way. Then it's a pretty easy statement for me to wrap my mind around. It's not always the easiest statement for me to put into play um, and to figure out um, what, you know, how to make that happen because. I'm, I'm as human as, as everyone else is, but it to me was just an absolutely wonderful reminder of the importance of our focus on Christ and, and what he's done for us. And if we, if we start there and follow that by loving our neighbors and loving those around us, then I, I fully believe that many of the obstacles that we put in our way um, will, will, will disappear and will fall out of of um, the way, because it's when we, we start putting things and ideas in place of God or others that I think it gets us as Christians and as humans um, in trouble. So those were, the, those were the big if thens that I took out of this entire passage. And the question that I've had to wrestle with all week is, uh, and the, the question that I've asked myself is, do you love him? Do I love God? And do I love others? And my answer to both of those at first blush is not as much as I can and not as much as I should.
So that's where I've been working this week and will continue to work is how do I love others? Um, and how do I love people who annoy me and irritate me um, or don't see eye to eye with me or um, you know, like um, things that I disagree with or vice versa? And how do I maintain my focus on his love for me, which makes me love him as much as I humanly can? And to me, that is the most important thing. And it's also in many ways, the hardest, um, the hardest thing for me to, to think through every day, because um, as I'm reminded nonstop, I just don't always like people. <laughs> I just don't always love people, but I do try. Uh, so this was a, a great reminder of that for me this week. And that was, um, that was my takeaway um, from, from this particular passage. Uh, with that though, I want to absolutely ask if if A, this passage is something that you've thought about before, or if you have a different idea, interpretation, or thought around it um, that I haven't thought of or haven't communicated, because I, I would love to hear different opinions. While also having a dog that has decided to use me as a personal chew toy. <laughs> I'm afraid he's gonna draw blood soon is the problem. Um, so anyway, but with that, that was the, uh, to me, that was just a very interesting passage this week and one that, uh, that I've been wrestling with, A, how to communicate, and B, what are the important parts? And as shows up so much in the New Testament, it's how we treat others, how we love others, and how, we love, how much we love God. And um, it sounds so easy to put into play, but I think it's also sometimes some of the hardest um, of the commandments to, to implement. So um, with that, I will, um, unless anyone has any questions or comments, um, I am going to say that it is time for us to move into a time of communion, which to me, this particular topic is so um, pivotal because um, it, it gives us a time to reflect and a time to think about um, our relationship, not only with, with Christ, but with others as we uh, come to the table. And I've actually asked, and I am going to see if, if Reverend Tammy is still um, open and willing to lead communion um, this particular week. Um, what I didn't tell her is um, when I started looking back, I seem to have missed every communion uh, service at First Baptist Church the entire time I was there. So the last time that I have been able to partake of communion that I have not led myself has been about five years. Um, so this is, um, so that was one of the reasons I was wanting to ask, um, but uh, I, will, I will ask and turn it over to Tammy to um, lead us in communion. Well, hello, can you hear me? Uh, faintly, yes. Uh-oh, let's see. Is this better? Yes. That's better. Okay. I am finagling um, a head... <laughs> We don't even need to go into that. <laughs> so thank you so much, Pastor Josh, for inviting me into this space and allowing me an opportunity to um, participate in one of my favorite uh, parts of worship is Holy Communion. Um, I love Holy Communion because, you know, what I heard about uh, in your message, you saying that um, the, you know, there's, this challenge of loving other people and how you don't do it enough and you want to do it more. And that what I love about Holy Communion is that there is grace and it's an opportunity to reset. Um, every time we partake in Holy Communion, it is um, a reminder of what Christ uh, has asked of us as the church to love. And the Holy Communion is all about love the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross um, and the love that God has for us. And it's our opportunity to reset. So no matter how well we did last week or how well we didn't do yesterday, today is an opportunity to reset. And as it tells us in the scriptures, um, well, before we do that, everyone, I want you to get your communion elements. So you can grab whatever is nearby what I thought were Mother's Day, can you guys see me? Yes. Okay, what I thought were Mother's Day donuts, 
It happens to be Holy Communion donuts that were delivered by Pastor Josh early this morning. Um, I'm going to have donut and tea with cream. So whatever's by you, you can have crackers, you can have bread, you can have a donut, cinnamon rolls, pancakes. <clears throat> I've done communion with folks have jelly beans. <laughs> That's the only solid that they had. And then you grab a liquid, you can grab you know, water, you can actually have wine, um, juice, whatever is by you. I see you, Karen, it looks like you have, uh oh, I, I hit something, did I go away? My computer is not being my friend today. <laughs> you have no idea what's happening on this end over here. Okay. Um, whatever you have available to you, it really isn't the actual element itself. It's what it represents that matters. So um, if you're ready, you can hold up one of them so I can see that everybody has um, the elements, awesome, 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 wonderful, wonderful. So the scriptures say in 1 Corinthians 11, beginning at verse 23, for I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. <clears throat> and he said to them, this is my body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So the bread of God, our Lord and Savior, take and eat. And in the same way, he took the cup also after supper saying, this is the cup of the new covenant. This is the cup of the reset. This is the cup of second chances. This is the cup of grace, the cup that we don't have to be perfect, that we get to make mistakes because of the sacrifice at the cross. In the same way, take the cup and drink and do this in remembrance of Christ's sacrifice. <clears throat> and after supper, he said, for often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. So in my faith, of um, the African Methodist tradition, we say, go in peace, children of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again, amen. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Reverend Tammy, and thank you for leading. And um, I don't know if it was by design that you chose that particular cup, but Kevin picked up on it as quickly as I did made for more. What a great reminder that we are absolutely made for more. And so thank you for leading communion. Um, thank you for, um, for allowing us to participate and um, for leading us in that. Um, thank you. With that, the only thing that I think I have to um, provide a, for information is next week's um, passage, and I'm reopening my um, my presentation really quickly. And unfortunately, I don't have a way to go to um, the last slide, so I'm going to have to rush through really quickly. Don't get seasick, um, please, and thank you. But um, next week is. I'm titling it National Boundaries. Um, I, I had a much more provocative title about um, nationalism, but um, I would highly recommend digging into Psalm 47 uh, this week and be ready to discuss Psalm 47. Um, and with that, I will close this in prayer and then turn off the recording um, so that if anyone has anything, questions, comments, anything like that, that we don't need to have um, memorialized on um, YouTube, then we can have those conversations as well. So with that, I will close this in prayer. God, thank you. Uh, thank you for um, 
reminding us um, of the sacrifices you made. Um, thank you for um, the day and thank you for a day that we celebrate mothers and for some that is such a, um, a sad day for those who have lost children or lost mothers or lost both. Um, it can be and is also a day of celebration for um, the, the person who brought us into this world. Um, and so we thank you for, for the history, the memories, the knowledge, and the love that we've received. Um, I pray that you keep us safe this week. Um, give us a, a constant yearning um, to love others and to see others as your children and as our equals. Um, I pray that you um, bring us back safely next week. And um, we ask all this in your holy and mighty name. Amen.